Hey guys, how's it going? Today is part two of taking a look at some of your garden before and afters. The first one was a really fun video, super inspiring to see what you guys have come up with. We might even have enough submissions. I know there were a lot to do a part three and four as we have time to film it, but I just wanna jump right into these. We've got several of them to share with you today. The first one is from James in Alberta, Canada, zone 3B. Let's take a look at the before shot. Okay, this looks like maybe the back of the house, deck coming off the main floor area because I'm thinking that's a daylight basement based on what the neighbor's house looks like there. It kind of is built into the side of the hill and what looks to be possible terracing. Let's look at the after. Oh, whoa, that really made the yard look enormous. You know, you didn't even like, okay, let's go back. It doesn't look like there's much of a yard there, honestly. You go here and it's like, you put in the proper terracing and it just expands the space and that's quite a drop because the bottom set of stairs alone, there's one, two, three, four, five, six stairs there with gorgeous planters that looks like super tunia honey and purple fountain grass. That actually catches my eye big time. Really good colors, especially against the blue of your house. But the beautiful fire pit area, I, would, I could see us using that all the time. And then what looks like a shed with a pergola off of it and really beautiful plants. Okay, so James says, in 2017, that's when they purchased the home, small suburban lot. Uh, they attached a few before and afters of several areas, uh, but he said, man, I wish I would have taken more photos, lesson learned, and that is so true. Take tons of pictures through the whole process of your gardens. It really pays off to look back later. Makes you feel really proud and realize how far you've actually come. Uh, he said our lot was challenging to landscape due to an extreme slope, a six foot drop. And the first few years, 18 and 19, were spent setting up our hardscaping, um, completing retaining walls, fence, building the, oh, it's a garage, not a shed. Um, getting drip irrigation set up uh, and then getting electrical run and foundation plantings. I'm super happy that you included your timeline because I feel like so many of us want a finished product right away, not realizing that it can take years to get a space set up properly with your hardscaping and all the electrical. And that stuff is so important to the end result of your garden uh, because you don't want to get things done plant wise and then realize, well, I need electricity over here, or I would like to have water over there and then have to trench through and bulldoze some of the work that you've already done. So I'm thankful that you included that timeline. In 2019, we built raised garden beds and got started on the veggie plot. Are there pictures? Let's look. Oh, here's another interim shot or an interim shot. Looks like uh, walls are just being started there. Cute dog. There's a close up of the walls, close up a little bit of the plants. Looks like there's a, a red ipomea in with the honey. That's so pretty. A back to, oh, the lot goes back further than you even realize. That's a really pretty shot to be able to see just the walls without a bunch of plants around it, just so you can kind of see that structure. And there's the raised beds alongside the garage. Those are beautiful raised beds. A shot from up above. Take, wow, that is quite the drop. That first picture is just crazy to see what this, what the scale of this whole area is. I love the grass in between those pavers. Wow. Oh, now that's a beautiful shot. Look at that. Look at those hanging baskets. What an amazing idea. So just brackets off of your fence posts. Beautiful, like just one continuous kind of color combination. You've got whites and purples. That's really striking to me when there's not a lot, you know, your eyes not fighting. You can see that you've mirrored the same flowers. This must be a different year. Um, same flowers around your purple fountain grass. So it's very like peaceful to look at. I love seeing the vegetables too, with grass in between those raised beds. That's just a beautiful, well-tended space. They said this coming garden season, they have another big project planned, a paver patio under that pergola with a deck. He said, it's been a process in the beginning. We definitely struggled with underestimating both time and cost to complete projects. That's a huge thing. And the eagerness to get it done. Through it all, we learned it's never really going to be done and began to take pleasure in the journey. Each year, I now look forward to improving the garden just a little bit more and seeing it evolve over time. Can't wait for the trees to mature. Uh, our garden has become a gathering spot for friends and family and has been such a gift during the last two years. Oh, that is just amazing. Ah, James said, you're also a great scapegoat for me because whenever his partner complains about time or cost in the garden, he can just say, yeah, but you should see what Laura's doing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Next is from Ellie in the Czech Republic zone 6B. So this shot, 
shows a backyard, sort of a blank slate. It looks like there might have been, or maybe there's grass growing in right at that point. Little paver walkway up close, nice looking fence. Let's look at after. Is that even the same space? Holy moly. Okay, I gotta see timeline on this. My garden is a townhouse, a townhouse back garden of only about 1,300 square feet. I moved here in 2009. The garden was a blank slate and I wasn't into gardening at all, in all caps. <laughs> all I wanted was some lawn and a couple of trees for shade because the property is west facing. I only had a lawn, a hornbeam hedge, a, a two trees and a cornelian cherry bush for years. All of that changed in 2019 when I came across the video of the tour of Laura's parents' garden. I became a gardener at that exact moment. I was astonished that a garden can look so magical. That's what um, I subscribed to your channel and started to work on my garden, adding flower beds, creating different areas and planting loads of plants, but I'm limited by space. So this garden, okay, like look at the before again. Look at that after. Oh my goodness. That's like a two year old garden that looks like it has been there for a long time. Oh, here's an interim shot though, where the grass is all in looking really nice. I'm a grass fan, so I like to have some grass in my garden. You guys know this. Uh, there's another after shot, dang. You can really do a lot with a seemingly small space. I mean, it doesn't look small right here. It looks like you've designed that beautifully. And a shot back toward the house, beautiful seating area. Wow. What an amazing job. I love all the plants here too. I see your cute dog sitting in the grass enjoying. And then beautiful hostas and hookahs in there. There's some coleus tucked in. I see some lilac blooms up above. I don't know if those are in your garden or peeking over from a neighbor. A bench tucked back in there. But I see, like when you look back toward the back of your garden, and I'm not sure everything that's back there, but I see a fern. I see um, something with a boulder leaf. I see a shrub that's got a little bit of orange tinge on it and then a grass beneath it. The, the different color and texture back there and everywhere is just, a, it's beautiful. And then that side looks like it might receive more sun than the other side. So there's a rhododendron, there's um, lilies, canna, lupins, veronica, dianthus, lamium, uh, whew, other things that I don't know, artemisia in there really beautiful oh and look at this one i love the little stacked rock edging that is so sweet there's a hakana kloa uh, japanese forest grass the areola variety uh, that's that yellowy grass there uh, there's a hellebore right next to it there's fern hostas um hookra beautiful blend really great job ellie I can't believe that you are not into gardening at all. It does not look that way. Looks like you've been gardening forever. Next is from Marzana in Warsaw, Poland, zone six. So the before is a side yard, it looks like. Uh, nice grass, nicely edged. There's nice mulch there. It looks like there's a weeping, maybe a weeping pussy willow up against the wall there. I don't know if I'm right on that or not. Um, some little evergreens. Let's take a look at the after. Oh. Look at how beautiful and cottagey that looks. I love that. Isn't that the most inviting thing to see that beautiful curved walkway with all the color and texture and the window boxes are gorgeous. So Marzana said, I bought this place with a tiny garden only 100 square meters in 2018. It looks sad and square. However, it had a good lawn. I agree with that. It was pretty narrow, but at least it is sunny. The key struggle is always the soil as, it's, as, it, as it is very poor and sandy. So planting requires lots of new compost. My previous garden was shady and it's such a great joy to be able to have all the plants I could never have before, like hydrangeas, echinacea, roses, phlox, grasses, or pines. The great win is to be able to spend time in the garden and enjoy it throughout the whole year. And isn't it though? That is a win and just absolutely beautiful. We could just sit here and study all of these plants in here. And I love the mixture of plants in the window boxes. I know I already mentioned that, but I love all the bright pink and the purple. For some reason, that's just, I love it. Next is Curtis in Las Vegas, Nevada, zone 8B. Let's take a look at the before. Okay, so we've got what looks to be a very, but much so a blank slate, a gravel lot, a couple of palms, not looking super happy. Let's look at the after. What is that? That looks like a resort. Is that the same place? I got to study here real quick. Okay, we're going to go back to the before. 
So we can see houses, houses in the background. They've got some nice green trees. That's always nice when your neighbors have some nice plants that you can kind of use as a backdrop. But I also see power lines, a light pole in the after. I'm thinking this picture was taken from a different angle. I could be wrong. It looks like you're kind of in the back corner, maybe where the light pole is, because I don't see any lines in the, the power lines and maybe they were buried. I mean, we've had power lines buried here, but it doesn't matter what angle this picture is taken at. This is an amazing transformation, taking it from this to what looks like a, an oasis in the middle of a desert, like legitimately. <laughs> I see beautiful agaves around the base of those palms, beautiful paver pathway. I love the irregular shaped pool with the really sparkly clean water, blue bottom. I love the plants, just the way you've done everything. I like the pots in the background, how they mirror the color in the pool. And you can see a seating area in the back. I would wanna just get a beverage and go back there and just sit and enjoy. And that's how you want your garden space to feel. Okay, so here's another before shot. This looks like it is Okay, I'm all turned around on how these pictures were taken, but this looks like maybe the back of the house, again, maybe from the back corner. And after. Whoa, look at that. I wonder how long it took to get this way. Let's see if Curtis left information. When I bought my house in 2008, I bit off more than I could chew. I wanted a big yard and a blank space, but landscaping in the desert is no joke. Oh, I, I can only imagine. I complain about our heat and wind here. I can't even imagine <laughs> what you have to do. It took me 10 plus years to get to this point, but all the tears, sweat, and backbreaking labor was all worth it for my little desert oasis. Biggest challenges were figuring out what to do with such an expansive desert space. I wanted to create different areas on the property to make it more inviting. Oh, you certainly did that, certainly did. I created different entertaining areas as well as gardens and elevation. I didn't have the patience to let all my palms grow, so I craned in numerous palms over the years. That sounds like something that Aaron would want to do. Crane in all your trees. <laughs> There's so much more to show, but keeping it in the before and after theme. Thank you for submitting your pictures. What an amazing, like inspiring transformation. Oh, so beautiful. Next is from Ashley in Rhode Island zone six. So here we have the before, the front of the house and beautiful home. Uh, looks like some standard flower beds that you see, you know, just kind of standard with boxwood and evergreen on the corner, um, some grasses. This, it looks like it's out of season, um, like it's not in the middle of summer because the leaves are off the shrub there in the corner. Let's look at the after. Oh my goodness, just eliminating, I'm going back one again, looking that to the left of the sidewalk, you've eliminated the grass and you've eliminated a lot along the right side too. Let's look at the after again. Oh, oh, I love this. I love your plant choice so, so much. So you have echinacea and I'm trying to, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here. Pin cushion flower maybe, uh, some salvia, delphinium. There's a spruce of some kind in there. There's a Prince Tut grass there. It looks like a, I don't know what that is right there. When I, when I uh, zoom in it, it's not as clear. Um, but lamb's ear in there, a hedge of lavender along your whole walkway. I love those cool colors, the cool blues and then the purple flowers. And what an amazing mixture of texture as well. How beautiful. Oh, oh, here's another shot. This is later on in the season. The lavender's bigger. Look at the hydrangeas. Wow. Looks like Incrediballs. Couple in the front there, one leading up to the doorway. And it looks like your spruce has gained some size too. There's some pink flocks in there. Great job, Ashley. It amazes me to see how just removing a patch of grass and adding some plants, how much that it can, can improve the view. Next is from Katie in Ontario, Canada, zone six. Before, okay, backyard. Looks like it's maybe a more mature backyard. There's some big trees. There's also some, uh, I see some power lines going through, large shrubs, just a large grassy area. Here's the after. Oh, oh my goodness. I love, love this. Look at that greenhouse, you guys. I love the black. How beautiful. We're going white with our flower shed, but this makes me want to go black for sure. That is so pretty. Okay, so shed to the left. Okay, hold on. 
She's included information. So Katie said, they purchased their house in the summer of 2015 and shortly after I, I discovered your channel, I credit you a lot for the inspiration. Thank you for that. Photo one shows the backyard after we moved in. So let's take a look at that one again. There was an overgrown dogwood, a struggling pear tree, a mature emerald locust off to the left and a dead plum tree to the right. The garage was in disrepair. Photo number two, so the after is what it looks like now, six years on. We built a greenhouse at the end of 2019, a big help with the vegetable gardening. We got rid of the pear due to disease and extended the veggie garden all the way down to the greenhouse. We added in an iron fence, which I love, it just ties the whole thing together and everything started filling in. I love vegetable gardening, but I needed it to be beautiful. I hear ya. Uh, she says, photo three is a veggie garden. Let's take a look. Oh, brick edges. Brick raised beds, love that. And it looks like they're repur repurposed bricks and pavers. That's amazing. Photo four is the reclaimed iron fence is over 100 years old. We own an ironwork business, so we were able to easily alter the fence to fit our space, refinish it and install it ourselves. Jeez, working in a piece like that, beautiful. I love your obelisks, the big, branch obelisks, that's really neat looking. And photo five is for you, Laura, a borrowed view of a huge tricolor beach. This is its late spring color and makes the blues and purples of the iris and foxglove pop. This tree really took off when we trimmed everything away from it, gorgeous tree, and they do really well here in our climate. This tree is about 20 years old. Oh, lucky. You are so lucky to have that in the background. It looks like a tricolor beach and a smoke bush and all the cool tones and the lush green. Oh, looks like you might get rain. Do you get rain where you're at? <laughs> and photo six is the reward, the bounty. See a basil plant, squash, tomatoes, peppers. That picture feeds my soul. I need that right now, real bad. <laughs> Wonderful job, Katie, beautiful space. Next is from Jennifer in Albany, New York, zone 5B. Take a look at the before. Oh, that's a sweet house. I love the light gray, the black shutters. Looks like one little um, kind of flower bed right outside the front, kind of standard, and then one kind of in the middle of the lawn there because it, your lawn looks like it might slope just a little bit. So let's look at the after. Oh my, oh my word. For a hydrangea lover like myself, seeing something like this and seeing these hydrangeas look so beautiful, Oh, I love it. That makes me want to plant even more hydrangeas. I see Supertunia Vista, Silverberry, Fuchsia, Bubblegum. I see uh, Lamb's Ear in there, Rudbeckia by the stairs. Uh, I think those might be limelights, possibly. Uh, they, if they color up later in the season, they might be like something different, a little bit different. Um, I don't know what the ones, okay, I gotta read your notes. So, Jennifer said, the before pictures are the front of my house right after I purchased it 10 years ago. The curb appeal was really sad but I knew absolutely nothing about gardening. I previously only had experience with one house plant and I killed it. My best friend who is a phenomenal gardener Googled and your videos taught me how to garden. Oh, that's awesome. I decided to embrace the house's inner Cape Cod and feature hydrangeas. Good plan. This area is full sun. The lower level has five little limes and the main levels are uh, three limelights. We were right. The bed also has boxwoods, rudbeckia, coneflower, peonies, sedum, lamb's ear, and a bunch of other goodies. I switch out annuals every year around the little limes for added color. My biggest struggles are powdery mildew and getting the enormous macrophylla hydrangea to put on the great bloom show, which you can see it beneath the left hand limelight there. You can see the big, it's a beautiful looking shrub and I do see some blooms tucked in there. It blooms on old and new growth, but it's so big that the new growth flowers start to form just in time for our first frost. Dang it. The whole process was a lot of work, sweat, dirty fingernails and fertilizer, but it was worth it. I learned being a gross hot mess working in the garden is where I find joy. Yes, I think many of us can relate. <laughs> okay, close up of the flower bed. That's right after you moved in. Oh my goodness, look at that after. That's just so gorgeous. Love it. Next is Kelly from Charlottesville, Virginia, zone 7A. Here is the before. Okay, it looks like a new, like a new area, newly built home, a new uh, garden where, you know, it's kind of typical where you just get like a few trees planted in there. There's a pine and a couple other things out of season, so I don't really know what they are. Let's look at the after. Oh, is that, that is a birch. That is, the whole thing is beautiful. I, my eye went straight to that triple trunk birch tree. 
beautiful. I love the pink peony and the nepeta, the lavender nepeta right beneath it. That is a glorious color combination. I love what you've done to the deck too. That actually took me a second. I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't the same house. It is different deck, beautiful design. I love the open stairs like that. It makes it look so much more inviting, doesn't it? Oh, I like the paper patio around it, just kind of extending that space and making it look a little, just everything looks larger like that. I like seeing your Arborvitas along the side there look so healthy. It gives me hope for ours. Oh, beautiful job. Here's another shot from the other side. So it looks like there's a spot maybe that's struggling a little bit. Is that painted out? Let me see what uh, Kelly said. We bought our new construction home in 2014. The yard was a blank slate. After the fence went in, we planted green giant arbs along, all along the back of the fence for privacy. We struggle with deer here and they don't seem to care for the green giants. And then we reworked the back deck with new railings and steps doing the work ourselves to save the money. Dang, you did a great job. Our biggest struggle in this yard has been drainage. We, got a, we get a lot of rain in Virginia and our lot sits lower than our neighbors. So we've had drains installed and added flagstone pathways over areas where grass would drown every year, which you can see in this other picture. Uh, but one of the best things we did was plant a river birch right smack in the middle where all the water pooled in the back corner. Plants would just drown back there. And planting that tree has helped so much and it's living its best life. Uh, it's probably loving its life. I still have lots of plans. The garden is never done, but it's fun to look back at how far we've come and how, um, and I have to thank you for continuing to inspire me. Awesome. Let's look at the, the after of this side. Yeah, look at that. I see hydrangeas in there. I see um, some pincushion flowers, a hedge of boxwoods around the deck. I see that birch tree. And I love that you just worked with what you had. Like you have a low spot with lots of water. So instead of having to rework a whole area or build something up, you just find the plant that's appropriate for that. So birch trees, alders, those kinds of things love a ton of water. Um, so putting the birch tree probably uses up all of that water right there and makes it plantable for the rest of the stuff that you want to put around it. Oh, there's another shot right there. Kind of just a big open area. Oh my goodness. I love your fence. I love that four rail black stained fence. Aaron and I kind of thought about doing that around our property on that scale. It was so incredibly expensive. We went with what we already have, which is the white vinyl. But every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I just love it. I see a beautiful white clematis up one side of your arbor. Love the gate. And then a climbing pink rose there, kind of sectioning off the little trampoline area, which we're gonna probably have at one point here. Fun to see some ideas. Great job, Kelly. Next is D in Chattanooga, Tennessee, zone 7A. So let's take a look at the before. Okay, so it looks like the back corner of a backyard, nice bank of green trees. I always love to see that. And a sweet shed, not a whole lot going around it, but very tidy. I see the lone strawberry pot sitting out there with something in it. Let's take a look at the after. Oh. You've transformed that shed. Uh, she said she does have a YouTube channel called uh, Dee's Yard. Oh, she included some video. Okay. Oh, that's helpful to see kind of some of the surrounding area. And more plants there to the left. There's some spirea, there's a nine bark, hydrangea, some phlox. Oh, and there's the water feature. I can almost like hear that. I bet that's just a really peaceful, calming spot. Good job, Dee. We will link your YouTube channel down below in the description. Next is Connie from Hutchinson, Minnesota, zone 4B. Here's the before. Okay, so just like a big, massive, kind of overgrown looking area. Maybe some lilac in there, I'm not sure. There's a terraced area, because you can see the rocks there kind of uh, indicating where there's another level and just some grass in there. Here's the after. What? <gasps> Oh my goodness. Okay, I gotta, I gotta go to the before. Okay, so we're seeing this from slightly, a slightly different angle, but not much. See that shed in the back in the before with the trees? This is kind of before, maybe when the trees are just leafing out or so, uh, you can kind of see a little tinge of green on them. And then when we look at the after, you can still see that shed, but we're kind of to the side of it now, looking more toward that bank of trees. And oh my goodness. So you removed the big section of, of things and put in just the most beautiful raised bed garden. I love this with the round circular area. There's that, uh, do you call it a gazebo patio, covered patio back there? 
Beautiful. So Connie said, this family garden has been in the works for many years. It first started out as a vegetable garden, but in 2010, we built a shop located on our farm, Lamb Shop and Wellness Center, which resulted in taking down the large lilac shrub. This led to the creation of our herbal, herbal garden, where we teach many herbal medicine classes within this garden as I'm a clinical herbalist. This garden took many years to create, uh, but we still have much more to do. We have taken this garden in steps as we couldn't afford to do it all at once. We feature mostly medicinal or edible plants, which include echinacea, St. John's wort, lemon balm, white yarrow, culinary herbs, lavender, skullcap, figwort, wood betony, hyssop, calendula, California poppy, wild bergamot, uh, borage, bone set, joe pie weed, butterfly weed, and many more. This last year in 2021, we had a terrible drought which was a task to always water as we do not have any irrigation. Oh my word, oh, I can't even imagine. Under the rocks, we recycled old rubber to help keep the weeds down as we would not use any sprays. It has truly been a beautiful process. I should say so. I wanna see if there's more pictures. Okay, yep, there's more pictures. Oh, dang. <laughs> you had to get some equipment in there. Look at that. You can see kind of the, uh, the cutout next to the shed. And you can see some of the rubber possibly that you were using for weed control. There's another interim shot. I'm gonna go back to the, cause I see in the after you've got some fencing around it. Some black fencing. So this one is kind of a different view, front view here before the covered patio is in the back. Wow. That is a beautiful process. Oh, thank you for including all those pictures. Well done. Next is from Chris in North Dallas, Texas, zone 8A. So we have in the before here, a backyard, pretty standard, nice grass, love the brick wall. That's beautiful. And nice wood fence there. Here's the after. Oh, you put in a swimming pool. What is it about swimming pools? Like they immediately make me feel like I'm on vacation. Like I, I bet you feel that way when you walk into your backyard. That is beautiful, beautiful flower, but I see the evergreens back there. So you said you were in Texas. So here, let me see if there's any more pictures. Oh, another view of the end of the pool there. Oh, beautiful. Chris said, three years ago, we moved from zone five to a Texas zone 8A. Dang, that's a learning curve, isn't it? Into a brand new build with only grass in our backyard. Being in a zone 8A was a whole new world and in clay too. I had to learn so much because I no longer had great lofty soil and had to deal with uh, the extreme summers. This is when I found you and what, uh, oh, what, what a help you've been. I love our backyard and it makes me happy and proud. That's amazing, I love to hear that. First, we added the water feature. <laughs> then we added the three Taylor junipers. Taylor junipers, I think those are, are those rated down to a zone six maybe? Um, I would really like to put some Taylors in because they're really narrow and tall and you can tell the growth habit by your pictures. It's really nice to see them in your yard actually. Uh, these are great because they look like Italian cypress but are suited for the zone. You will see the sides of the pool are lined with Russian sage. The center are dahlias, not in bloom in this picture. There are two beautiful limelight hydrangeas along the back fence that are doing great in the mostly sunny spots. Yuccas are in the pots on the pillars uh, now as I didn't want to put new annuals in every year. Yuccas are great. You know, uh, we have two urns in our back garden by the barn and I had annuals in them for the first couple of years and then I put yuccas in. I put the color guard yucca and they kind of have a, an agave kind of appearance. Really wonderful structure and I never water them ever. They aren't hit by sprinklers. They just get whatever water our our like rain we get, which is an average of nine to 11 inches a year. And that is it. That's all they get. <laughs> Poor things. They thrive though. Uh, I surround them each summer with a different annual color. Finally, an accidental, but on purpose, a large zinnia patch along the right. I seeded there my first year to simply fill it in for the year while I fig figure out what I wanted. I let them go to seed and this is the result. Amazing. Everything is on drip. Again, thanks to you so that I can plant it and forget it. It's truly my zen place. That's beautiful, Chris. Great job. I would think in a zone 8A, a pool would be kind of a must. Next is from Nick in Athens, Wisconsin, zone four. So here is the before shot. Oh, I like the back of your house. That looks like it's maybe a little bit of an older home. Am I wrong? Am I right? I don't know when it was built. They bought it in 2018, but I love the lines of it. The windows, I love the multi-pane windows and I like the roof line. It's really, really charming. Uh, and it looks like you've got a project going on back there. There's tractors, equipment, kind of a blank slate. Let's see the after. Oh my goodness. Oh, you even, you've painted the house. You added some beautiful, the wood, I don't know what it's called. The little wood detail up there in the gable or the peaks. 
some har you made took it very farmhouse so farmhouse style lights um kind of that white white farmhouse look i love that with the white and black um, umbrellas and beautiful patio area dang i want to look at the before and after again so before okay so we still have the same tree up next to the house there's the after oh you've made it into a space where like that's a very usable space lots of seating so you have an option up closer to the house one out here on the patio and beautiful area for planting i love the big stones you used i'm um, kind of graduating up to the highest level they're just huge they're like benches seats in and of themselves very comfortable to sit on i don't know if you guys sit on them you probably don't need to with all the nice furniture out there but hey if you have a huge party you have extra seats <laughs> oh oh my oh my look at that whoa that that's incredible seeing this that destruction like all that earth scraped away and the house kind of looks like what's going on here what kind of house is this look at the after again <laughs> that's incredible okay so one two three four five six seven eight steps up your deck and look at those big slabs those big stones that's awesome substantial it looks like it's proper for that area oh look at the silo I've heard of people doing this, transforming them into a, a usable, like that's a little bar area. Okay, so I gotta read this. Nick says, I purchased my home in the winter of 2018. I was not able to see the landscaping or backyard under the snow cover. <laughs> I have a horticulture degree with an emphasis on landscape design and I've always dreamed of having my own yard and place to garden and unwind. You were the perfect person to get this yard. Over the summers of 2020 and 2021, we completely transformed the overgrown yard, which included removing dead and dying trees and shrubs and created an oasis to come home to every night. My family and I have done most of the work ourselves, including deconstructing and reconstructing the grain bin outside our uh, grain bin outdoor kitchen and laying the paver patios. I have a love for unique evergreen and whimsical touches throughout the garden and continue to add unique perennials and shrubs as I find them. My home and gardens will be featured on a local garden walk tour this summer. Thank you. That is just, oh, Nick, you did an amazing job. I can't believe you've done so much of that yourself. That's incredible. And it only took you two years, 2020 and 2021. Is, am I reading that right? Yeah. Next is from Mickey in Holt, Michigan, zone 5B. Here's the before. Okay, so we've got a walkway kind of up to a front, front door, possibly here, just kind of a, a skinnier flower bed area. Let's look at the after. Oh, look at that. Look at how much more welcoming that is. Dang, that is huge. All that color and texture is so pretty. I love all the pinks too and purple. Oh, here's another angle of it. There's a hanging basket, couple hanging baskets up there, couple containers. I like the little, is that kind of a powder blue chair there in the corner? Oh, and there's one before, like maybe uh, earlier on that season, before it really filled in. Yeah, that is, dang. That really fills in quick, doesn't it? That is incredible. So Mickey says, we moved into this house in 2017. There were landscape rocks everywhere. It made it difficult to plant anything because there were multiple layers of landscape fabric, sand and gravel underneath. Dang, I've, I've planted in areas like that. It is really hard. I hated the way it looked, so I finally decided to make the change. I took all the rocks out by hand took out all the landscape fabric and dug several inches of sandy and gravelly soil out and put fresh soil in. It was hard work. I bet it was. Dang, I planted multiple supertinias in the space right away. The dianthus, lily, and clematis were already there. There's also a wisteria planted on the left-hand side. I was wondering what that was. I included a photo taken approximately one and a half months after planting. I used miracle Grow fertilizer once per week. The moss rose reseeded itself and came up on its own. And the last photo I included is how the space looked this last summer. I had added an echinacea and big pot planted with annuals and the wisteria was moved because it was taking over. I have hops planted on the right side that grow as an arch over our doorway every year. And I bet they do. You can cut hops back down to the ground and they just grow so fast. I'm so happy to freely be able to plant in this space now. That's the thing. Like if you have a space like this, it can be a lot of hard work, but it is so worth it in the end to be able to go out and pop in whatever you want and not have it be a struggle. Because that's the thing. We don't want our gardens to feel like a struggle every time we go out there. So if we can make some improvements to where it's actually a joy, it just makes all the difference. Oh, Mickey, thank you for including those pictures. It's really nice to see colorful annuals right now. Well, that echinacea, that's a beautiful one too. Look at that. Sunflowers in the pot. 
Bordeaux Supertunia. I see the hops there too. That's really a wonderful vine right there. Hops can take quite a bit of abuse in terms of wind and sun and all of that too. And the last one we're gonna look at today is from Margie in Puyallup, Washington. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that town name right, but zone 8B, let's take a look at the before. Okay, so the yard itself, pretty much a blank slate, looks like there's some grass there, kind of. Um, and then there's, a, that as hedges go, that is a spectacular looking evergreen hedge. And it's nice to see the bigger, that looks like a willow there on the left, and there's some beautiful evergreens there on the right. Let's look at the after. You, oh, you really went to town, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I bet the sound, like just even seeing that waterfall, you can kind of imagine what that brought to the space. When you add moving water like that, it just makes things feel alive. And it looks like you've got landscape lighting in there too. Like this might've been taken on either an overcast day or when it's just starting to get dusk because I see another light kind of shining up toward that evergreen there on the left. And so I bet that this is just as spectacular in the night as it is during the day. And that's something that Aaron and I want to add some landscape lighting. Um, we've never done that before, really. We just use the cheap little $5 solar ones from Home Depot right now, which work okay, but to have some legitimate lights, it really can make your nighttime landscape look awesome. But I love right there, the Japanese maple. So that's kind of like the tallest element there. And then you've got the spruce kind of coming down on the left. Um, you've got a bunch of annuals, just a bunch, geraniums, and it looks like super bells maybe in the ground, which is an amazing feat right there, the yellow and the purple up front. In the back, you can see another light shining, something blooming white, is that a daisy? I can't tell exactly um, from this angle. It looks like a buddleia in there, some butterfly bush, and uh, some either salvia or veronica in the pink, kind of spiky bloom color back there, but really gorgeous. Love that, Margie. And that is it for today's video, you guys. Like I said, we did get a lot of submissions for this garden before and afters, so it's possible we'll do a part three, part four, as we have time to do that. And I'm honestly like, I don't know what to even call this series, where we ask you guys for submissions on various garden topics. It's been so much fun, uh, and I love to be able to look at this kind of thing. I know one that I really wanna get to is a part two of the greenhouses, which has kind of been looming out there. We did part one last winter, so it's been, like over a year, um, but we still have a lot of those submissions. It'd be really fun to go through and look at some of those greenhouses. It's just so much fun to gain inspiration from each other. Now, if you have submitted pictures for any one of the videos, it's likely we'll get to them at some point along the way uh, as we do, you know, multiple parts for these subjects, uh, but we do get quite a number of submissions. So I just wanted to mention that if you did send in pictures and we haven't featured it yet, um, it doesn't mean that we won't. It just means we haven't gotten to it yet. So otherwise these videos would be hours long, lots of hours. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and we will see you in the next one.